Good morning and welcome to Planet Old History. I'm back, yes. Today we are going to discuss what if Morocco joined the European Union. This is actually not ASP, because there was indeed in 1987 a membership application of Morocco to join the European Union. Back in those days, the European Union was called a bit different. It was the EC, the European Communities. Now, we are going to draw a little bit. And for Morocco to join the European Union, we'll have to consider first the geography. The geography will be much more important in that aspect than the economy. For the simple fact that Morocco has claims on Madeira, on the Canary Islands and on Ceuta and Melilla. So Morocco will have to relinquish actually the claims on the Canary Islands and Madeira. Now, as for Gibraltar, Melilla, and uh, Ceuta, that might be a bit different. And I'm actually on uh, purpose putting Gibraltar as well in the same basket. Because actually Spain might consider blocking the membership of Morocco if Morocco would claim the same as Spain claims on Gibraltar shared sovereignty so if spain says hey uk i want to have control also over gibraltar you will then see morocco looking at spain and being like hmm i should ask the same trait no and thus it would just create a lot of trouble so in order to stop all this spain will not ask nothing of gibraltar nothing from the uk and Morocco will do likewise. So actually it will improve the situation in that way. Now the most problematic part will of course be Western Sahara. And it's still nowadays a very, very problematic area. Why? Western Sahara used to be part of Spain. And Spain with the death of Oh, well, the coma of uh, Franco, they retreated from Western Sahara. So they wanted to avoid taking any kind of responsibility and they concluded something called the Madrid Accords with uh, Morocco and also Mauritania. And in there it was somehow defined that uh, both countries, they would somehow have responsibility. So they shared control over Western Sahara. There was like a specific line where it was said that Mauritania would control that part and Morocco would control the other one. So Mauritania this one and Morocco this one. Our timeline there was somehow like some fight where the Sahari people actually wanted of course independence, the Moroccans didn't accept then somehow the Mauritanians, they just retreated and it all became really messy. And still up to date, nobody really recognizes the ownership of Morocco over the whole Western Sahara. So if Morocco wanted to join, and probably most European countries would later just say, yeah, you know, just give them autonomy. They would all agree to probably have like Western Sahara split between uh, Mauritania and Morocco but of course those countries would have to grant autonomy to the Zahari people. Now of course the Zahari people they would still be the loser even in that alternate timeline but for the whole of the region it might be a huge benefit. So there would be no issue with Gibraltar, no issue with Ceuta, no issue with Melilla Canary Islands anyways, no issue on Madeira likewise. So it could actually work pretty well. Now, what about the economic part? For the economy, we would see a line 
kind of like this. Morocco would suffer from a huge brain drain. Being part of the EU will actually make it much more easier for specialists and other people who have the right papers to move across. So we are not even talking about Schengen, that's a bit later. So Morocco will see the specialists going away, especially to Portugal, to Spain, where their specialists in return they also actually went away. So as we know nowadays, the Spanish and Portuguese people, they also tended to immigrate from their countries. So they went like to Germany, to France, to Luxembourg, especially Luxembourg, to Belgium, even the Netherlands, Switzerland. So you could find, you can find them everywhere. And the Moroccans, they will actually replace those people in Portugal and Spain and they will also go to France. Why France? Well, France being the old, you know, colonial overlord, so to say, it would actually make somehow uh, sense for them to go there. Also, the French language is spoken. And Morocco being part of the EU will actually make French within Morocco much more stronger. Why? First of all, French is already uh, semi-official language within Morocco. Second of all, a lot of young people, they speak French. Even old people, they speak French. And when they speak Arabic, they mix very often French words in their Arabic language. So French might actually even be so strong that they could replace the Arabic language. Now, another thing might be from the other perspective. So now we change towards a more European perspective. What will the Europeans think of seeing so many Moroccans being able to all of a sudden like immigrate to their countries? They might have fears. And also the Moroccans, they will have fear of losing much and much more people. What will happen is that Actually, all of these countries, they will come together with Morocco and they will decide that the Schengen is not an option for Morocco. So Morocco would not be part of the Schengen area. But not only because the other countries would say, yeah, we are afraid to receive too many immigrants, not to handle it. But actually Morocco would ask them, please don't take us to Schengen or we will lose all our specialists. And for Morocco, it will be more difficult to replace them due to their lack of uh, good education system, which would have to be developed even more within the European Union. And also because, yeah, Algeria and Morocco, they are not in good terms. And a lot of people in Mauritania, they are actually still living a very traditional way of life. So for them, there is not an option, you know, to just go at university, it's really like the super, super elite who can afford it. Whereas in Morocco, it's more common to have also middle class and even poor people going at university. Border control. Border control is a very, very difficult aspect of this new European Union with Morocco. Imagine you have a huge, huge desert and in the middle of the desert you have like a border that cuts it and you have to control it. You have to send people there. You have to make checks. There is the chance of people from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa to coming there without paper. That will be the biggest and the toughest challenge for this alternate European Union. What will happen? They will have to spend a lot, a lot of money to the Frontex. So the Frontex, as you maybe might know, is like this um, border patrol of the European Union. And they go all around, well actually in here, even in the sea, to check that everything is fine at the border. So having Morocco in there, they will spend more money for the Frontex, for better equipment, 
for better and suitable training for better also understanding so they will have to speak still Arabic in there because many people who are nomads in there they will probably not be proficient enough in French so there will be a lot of things that you will have to take care of. and also of course I know George a little bit different but you have to check the map where the border of Sahara with all the other countries it's a huge border so it will consume a lot of financial resources just to protect that border but at the same time if they manage to put like refugee camps it will be easier to just uh, send them back in case they are not accepted so it will be cheaper since it's closer to those countries where they originally come from most of the time another important date will be 2008 2008 2009 all those years they were financially a disaster for the world and because of this disaster many problems started to surface so you had countries like Greece for instance where it was seen that there were like mistakes in different calculations they had too much credit they had too much here and there Spain likewise Portugal likewise Ireland likewise and even Italy Morocco can go two ways the first way will be that they become a more aggressive Islamist aggressive African counterpart of Greece that sums it up so due to the membership with the EU it's more likely that all the economy will be more in this spider web of European uh, relations so all the institutions all the economical activities finances and all of that it will be like constructed within all those European agreements institutions and so on which might actually have a negative effect and because their currency would maybe be somehow not strong enough to keep up with the euro it might actually create a big problem still they could use the uh, devaluation so they could just somehow try to you know reduce their own value, uh, currency but it would not really solve the problem on the long run so problems within the society would appear unemployment could rise it was always like 10 percent even until now in OTL but in HEL due to this big problem it might actually rise up have Greece like levels and at the end you could end up with having like an Islamist or a uh, Salafist scene now the second option is that actually Morocco will perform similar as in our timeline so Morocco actually in 2008 they had an economic growth the unemployment didn't rise so much all over the years it stayed very stable it was very surprising and also for all those years that actually came after 2008 or even before 2008 Morocco was seen by many people as a very promising African economy so it's very business friendly it's fairly economical liberal you have actually very positive aspects within Morocco if you just keep yourself limited to Africa now the other change that we might see in such a timeline where the 2008 doesn't have so bad effects is that Moroccan society will also change more you will have basically no influence whatsoever of Islamism uh, you will have a bigger uh, secular state within Morocco nowadays it's difficult to call it really secular because well of course Islam is the most dominant religion in there but actually it might become a very very secular country if they are part of the UN if they don't suffer of this economic crisis democratic reforms would actually help people to feel more their liberties the king would have to somehow dictate dictate them from down and also he would have to lose or give up some of his powers which maybe he might do maybe not it's all depending on his personality in such a situation but I think 
because he actually himself wanted to join the European Union, he would agree to somehow make different changes. What will be the result of a Morocco membership in the European Union? The EU would, ask, ha, would have to ask themselves whether they want to be European or if they want to become some kind of Roman Union. Having Morocco as member and also because of the Treaty of Rome it will actually create this option where some politicians might say how about we just start to recreate Rome because this eternal idea of Rome was always there in the political scene so why should it just not reappear again I mean having Morocco in the European Union it will just scream okay Roman Union it will just totally scream that Within such a Roman Union, there might be, however, a few differences. Because Morocco would not have the Schengen uh, membership and not the movement uh, of goods, of person and all of that, it might create like some kind of split between this Roman Union. Within this Roman Union, you might then have like this hardcore European countries that want to stick to themselves and actually the founding members, or maybe less than the founding members, let's say uh, the Benelux, Germany and Austria, and perhaps some Scandinavian countries, even maybe France or not, they would stick more together because of the Euro, because of similarities that are just, you, you immediately see it in the policies or society and all of that. They would stick together, whereas you know, Spain is already more different than France, Portugal to Italy. It's, they are still European countries, but it would start to be a bit different. And then having even Morocco, it would be very, very different. Now, if Morocco is accepted in the European Re Union, you will have to face also the uh, problematic of Turkish membership. So the Turkish membership within the European Union will Will it be accepted, yes or no, if let's say they are rejected, even though Morocco is accepted, it will actually play Turkey towards the hands of Russia and also the BRIC states, especially Iran maybe, and there would be a very interesting dynamic. So maybe Turkey would somehow get out of the NATO, they would start collaborating more with Russia, more with Iran or China or other countries. And they would go so far where they actually just renounce the recognition of Israel. And instead, Morocco would be the only Muslim country to recognize Israel totally. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum. Forum.planetalthistory.ga Until next time on Planet Alt History.